Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi thriller film called Limitless. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Eddie Mora is an aspiring writer living in New York. For the past several months, movie. he's been living off of a book contract advance and financial support from his girlfriend. The only problem is that he hasn't written a single word of his book. He struggles writing his story, going through a continuous cycle of writing, deleting, and starting over. He spends his afternoons drinking at a bar or wasting away on his couch in a messy apartment. Huh. Eddie's fiancée, Lindy, <laughs> decides to end their relationship as she sees Eddie incapable of straightening out his life. Lindy says she hasn't seen any progress on Eddie's part, and with her career taking a big step forward, she can't afford to be taking care of Eddie all the time. Eddie says he loves her, and he wants to spend the rest of his life with her, but Lindy leaves. While walking home, a man, Vernon, calls out to him. Vernon is Eddie's ex-wife's brother. Eddie had a short-lived marriage with his college sweetheart, Melissa. Eddie remembers Vernon as Melissa's drug-dealing little brother, but Vernon says those days are behind him. Vernon invites Eddie for a drink at a bar and quizzes him, asking for updates about his life. Vernon says Melissa has remarried and has two kids of her own now, and Eddie tells him he's trying to write a book and admits he's having a hard time starting it. Vernon Stop. sees Eddie having creative problems and offers help. He takes out a small pill and offers it to Eddie. Eddie refuses, saying Vernon is still dealing. Vernon says the drug is legal, already finished with lab tests, approval from the Food and Drug Administration, and will be sold the following year. He has early access to it as he works for the pharmaceutical company that makes it, calling it NZT. Eddie is unconvinced, saying he knows a designer drug when he sees one. Regardless, Eddie is interested, and Vernon says the pill helps unlock formant receptors in the brain, allowing them to use 100% of their brain power. Vernon gets an urgent phone call and tells Eddie he'd love to meet up some other time, handing Eddie his card. Eddie refuses the pill, but Vernon insists, saying a single movie? tablet costs $800. Long, long, long On his way home, know, but... Eddie contemplates his life. Thinking he's already in his low point, them, he takes um, the NZT, reasoning out that his life couldn't get any worse. He runs into his landlord's wife on his way up, and she cusses him out for being late on his rent. She shouts at Eddie, saying he'll never amount to anything and that he'd soon be homeless. Eddie has lost focus on what the lady is saying as the NZT is taking effect. He feels dizzy, and the drug's effect finally hits. He sees the lady's bag and in it, a book about law. Eddie deducts that the lady dislikes him, but something else must be bothering her. He asks about law school, and the lady is surprised how Eddie knows about her studying law. Eddie recalls seeing the book once several years ago in a dorm room when he was still in college. Okay, dude. Somehow, he now remembers everything he's ever read, seen, and heard in his entire life. Eddie then recommends a different book on the law that would be more appropriate for her assignment and continues advising her about how she could proceed with her assignment. The lady is impressed, even attracted. Whoa, wait, is there toes? Somebody, somebody says toes. Guys. No? A sudden mastery of law and court. She invites her in, he helps with her assignment, and they eventually have intercourse. Eddie is perplexed as to how he suddenly has all of this knowledge. He realizes that he always had this knowledge, just in a random mess in his head. The NZT must have helped his brain rearrange and analyze the pieces of information. Okay, 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 yeah. Guys, I don't want to stop the video too much, chat. Guys, this feels like this was written by somebody who took Adderall for the first time and it kicked way too hard. Head. The NZT must have helped his brain rearrange and analyze the pieces of information he has in his head and turned them into a congruent and organized thought that he now has complete access to. Every documentary, every magazine article, every movie, every commercial, anything he's ever read and seen has now been turned into an accessible stream of information. He heads back to his dirty apartment and starts Holy cleaning. Shit. He starts writing and ends up with a 90-page preliminary manuscript. The NZT not only gave him superior knowledge but also gave him a boost in motivation. The following day, he feels the NZT's effects had worn off. He takes his manuscript to his editor. The editor is doubtful but reads it anyway. When Eddie reaches home, he receives voice messages from his editor praising him. Eddie then decides he'd need more NZT and heads to Vernon's apartment. Eddie shows up at Vernon's apartment, and Vernon immediately knows what Eddie wants. Eddie sees Vernon has bruises and scratches on his face and asks him what happened, but Vernon avoids answering. Vernon then reveals that he lied about the NZT being legal and approved by the FDA regardless, Eddie still wants more. Vernon asks Eddie to head out to do some chores, and Eddie complies, thinking he'd do what's necessary to get more NZT. He arrives back at the apartment and sees the door busted open. He sees Vernon's apartment had been ransacked and Vernon on the couch with a bullet hole on his head. Eddie calls the police but realizes he needs to find Vernon's NZT stash before the cops arrive. He finds a pack of NZT along with Vernon's list of clients and cash. At the police station, Eddie is interviewed and gets a phone call from Melissa. The police then tell Eddie they'll stay in contact. At home, Eddie takes another pill and his creative juices start flowing. Fuck yeah. With Vernon's cash, Eddie gets a haircut and new clothes. He starts getting in shape and even finishes his book in four days. He learns to play the piano in three days and notices he can learn any language by listening to it. Eddie becomes outgoing, meeting new people and impressing everyone with his mastery of almost any field. He becomes daring, his shyness gone, and he feels like he could achieve anything he ever wanted. Eddie gets a realization and suddenly knows what he needs to do. 
he delve into the world of stock trading. He meets Kevin, a broker working in Wall Street, and he becomes Jeez. Eddie's entry point into the world of stocks. Eddie starts reading books on stock trading and monitors the stock market for movement. With NZT, he grew Vernon's <laughs> remaining $800 to $2,000 in a day. The next day, it reaches $7,500. Eddie needs more capital for more growth and decides to seek help from a loan shark, Gennady. Gennady decides to give Eddie the loan but warns that he must be paid on time, or else writer. something terrible would happen to Eddie. Eddie accepts the risk, confident that he would pay Gennady back in no time. The following day, Eddie heads to Kevin's brokerage firm and starts buying and selling stocks. Within two weeks, Eddie increased his brokerage account to over $2 million. Word starts getting around, and soon, Kevin calls him to say that a Wall Street tycoon wants to meet with him. That evening, Eddie has dinner with Lindy, and he tells her all about the good things he's been doing with his life. Seeing Eddie clean up his act, Lindy is proud, and Eddie tells her he just got a sudden wake-up call and decided to get his life together. After dinner, they head back to Lindy's hey! place and make love. Over the next couple of days, the couple rediscovers their love, and soon, Lindy tells Eddie that she wants to be together with him again. As they talk about restarting their relationship, Eddie spots a man eyeing him from a distance. Later that night, Eddie stares out the window, looking to see if he'd spot the man but sees nothing. Lindy is in bed asking him to join her, but Eddie stumbles, and he's transported to the hallway in an instant. Eddie has no recollection of how he got out of his apartment, but Lindy sees him and asks him to go inside for a meal. The following day, Kevin joins Eddie for their meeting with the Wall Street giant. Kevin is nervous, but Eddie assures him that the meeting would be fine. Carl Van Loon, a Wall Street icon, arrives, and they start talking. Carl's companion is suspicious of Eddie and how he climbed up the ladder so fast, thinking it's a con, but Eddie talks his way through his questioning and impresses Carl. On a car ride home, Carl hands Eddie a stack of papers about the companies he owns and asks Eddie to take a look and to analyze a pattern and asks him what a good move would be. Eddie takes a thorough look and realizes that Carl must be planning a massive merger with a competing company. Carl is impressed even further, noticing how nobody could have figured that out in such short of a time. Carl gives Eddie a chance to restructure the deals between the companies and asks Eddie to meet him the following day. Eddie takes the challenge and exits Carl's limousine but decides he doesn't want to go home. He instead starts walking, wanting to take as much information as he can. Still, mm. he finds himself having episodes of unconsciousness, finding himself in different parts of the city, and having no recollection of how he got there. He stumbles into several parties, into different clubs, meeting different women, and eventually ending up in a hotel room with a model where they have intercourse. Unbeknownst to Eddie, the strange man he had seen earlier is following him. This, this is like when you're on the phone, you're on the phone, and you're talking about something, and it's the same thing, you're kind of like teleporting. After leaving the hotel, Eddie heads to the subway, where he runs into a group of thugs and gets into a fight. The NZT helps him remember every self-defense video, action movie, fight scene, no, and survival in documentary directions. he's ever seen, and he manages to fight off the group of thugs single-handedly. He starts running afterward and finds himself atop the Brooklyn Bridge by dawn with no recollection of what happened to him in the past 18 hours. No. He oh. heads home and gets to bed but is awakened by his alarm, reminding him about the meeting with Carl. Afraid that he might run into another episode of Amnesia, Eddie decides not to take an NZT pill. He looks through the files that Carl sent him but finds that he can't understand the data. Kevin calls, and Eddie tells him he needs to postpone the meeting, but Kevin says he'll never get another chance if he cancels now. Wait, Eddie arrives oh, sorry, at the... I need to go back. He starts running afterward and finds himself atop the Brooklyn Bridge by dawn with no recollection of what happened to him in the past 18 hours. He heads what? home and gets to bed but is awakened by his alarm, reminding him about the meeting with Carl. Afraid that he might run into another episode of amnesia, Eddie decides not to take an NZT pill. He looks through the files that Carl sent him but finds that he can't understand the data. Oh. Kevin calls, and Eddie tells him he needs to postpone the meeting, but Kevin says he'll never get another chance if he cancels now. Eddie arrives at the meeting without taking NZT, and he's noticeably less focused, dizzy and even has trouble speaking. Carl notices Eddie is out of focus and asks him about Hank Atwood, the competing businessman he intended to merge with. Carl says Atwood was a nobody and had a meteoric rise in the world of stock trading. Carl is perplexed about how Atwood had such a steep rise, now ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Eddie doesn't focus on Carl and instead fixes his gaze on the television where he sees a new report of a woman who had been found dead at the hotel, the same woman he was with the night before. Eddie loses all focus and excuses himself from Carl. He, he, he heads out and starts vomiting, his stomach churning at the thought that he may have killed someone. He heads home and gets a call from Melissa, who is asking questions about Vernon's death. Eddie asks her if they could meet up somewhere, and Melissa reluctantly agrees. Eddie goes through Vernon's notebook at a park, Looking up Vernon's clients and calling them to find out more about the effects of NZT each number he calls, he gets an answer saying the person had died. Each of them had experienced severe headaches, vomiting, and some even fell into a coma. Still, they all ended up dead. Oh. He dials another number, and a man behind Eddie had his phone ringing. He answers, and Eddie hears his voice from the other line. Eddie recognizes him as the man who was spying on him. It's the same man who had followed Eddie and the model to the hotel. Eddie starts running, and the man follows him. Eddie runs through the streets swerving through traffic. 
he finally makes his way into a taxi cab to the meeting place with Melissa. Melissa tells Eddie that Vernon's death didn't surprise her and says she knows about the NZT she took it too but soon decided to get off of it. Having the brain function at a prolonged high level of mental activity would result in mental fatigue and burnout. She got scared and stopped taking NZT suddenly, she oh. felt lazy, unfocused, and had problems maintaining her job. Two years have passed, and the after effects still haven't worn off. She recommends that Eddie stop taking the pill too but tells him to lower the dosage as a sudden stop would be lethal. Eddie heads home but runs into Gennady. Gennady beats up Eddie and demands his payment. They stumble their way up Eddie's apartment, and Eddie drops an NZT pill. Gennady picks up the pill, believing it to be some kind of drug, and takes it himself. They then head to the bank, and Eddie gives him the money. Gennady notes that the pill made him feel excellent, and he'd be asking for more soon. Fine. Eddie makes his way to Lindy's office and collapses. Eddie is left with no choice but to tell Lindy everything. Lindy finally understands the source of Eddie's newfound motivation and agrees to retrieve the pills for him. She heads home, takes the rest of the drugs, and heads back. On her way back, she sees the man following him. She runs into the city park and asks two men to help her, but the pursuer stabs both men and continues chasing after Lindy. Lindy hides behind some boulders and calls out. Huh? Eddie advises her to take one of the pills as it would give her the power to overcome the situation, and she does. After the pill takes effect, she knows what she has to do to escape from the man chasing her. She runs into the ice skating rink and carries a child, spinning her around and allowing the child's ice skates to slice the man's face. Well, the man falls, and Lindy gets away. The following day, Lindy expresses her concerns about the pill, saying it turned her into a completely different person. Eddie promises he'll stop taking the pill as soon as he gets enough money. On the street, Eddie sees Gennady spying on him. Eddie approaches, and Gennady says he needs more of the pill. Eddie gives him a few but realizes Gennady won't stop. Eddie hires two bodyguards, thinking he'd need security with him at all times. He meets with Carl again and apologizes for how he behaved earlier, saying he was just sick. Carl is unimpressed with Eddie's apology but says he has seen the projections Eddie had sent and is once again impressed. Soon, Eddie would broker what he calls the biggest merger in corporate history between Carl Van Loon and Hank Atwood. Eddie discovers that if he slept properly, stayed hydrated and fed, abstained from alcohol, and maintained a steady dose, the blackout episode stopped. He has suits custom made for him, all with a hidden pocket for all the NZT he has. He finds a chemist and asks him to reverse engineer the pill, hoping to make more of his own. While having lunch, he spots the detective that interviewed him about Vernon's death. The detective informs him that Eddie is now a suspect in the model's death as one eyewitness placed him at the crime scene. Eddie hires Morris Brandt, one of the best and most ruthless lawyers in New York. Brandt gets him walking free temporarily, saying the evidence the police had is too weak. Carl and Eddie meet with Atwood again, and they observe Atwood's deteriorating health, and Eddie notes that Atwood isn't even over the age of 60. Eddie heads back to his hotel room Wait and finds someone had broken in and, he assumes, is looking for the NZT security is now a primary concern, so he decides to buy a luxurious penthouse apartment with a top-of-the-notch security system. Later, Eddie runs into Gennady, who now has his own set of thugs guarding him. Eddie recognizes that Gennady, too, must be taking the pill. Gennady demands 20 more pills and blackmails Eddie with the model's death. The following day, the contract signing with Atwood is scheduled, but Carl is worried as Atwood is late. Atwood's wife arrives later and tells them her husband had suffered pain and dizziness and is currently hospitalized. She makes clear that they still want to proceed with the contract as soon as Atwood is able. They walk her down, and Eddie sees her driver is the man who had been stalking him. Eddie joins Brand at the police station that afternoon, where Eddie has to enter a police lineup. Eddie takes his jacket off and hands it to Brand. After the lineup, he meets up with Brand again, and he tells him that Eddie is cleared of suspicion. Brand then compliments Eddie's suit jacket. He makes his way back to Carl's office uh, and discovers Atwood is now in a coma. The, he heads the to the pockets. bathroom to take another pill and discovers his secret pocket is empty. His stash is gone. He goes back to Carl, and a package is brought to him. He opens it and sees his disembodied bodyguard's hands inside. In shock, he runs out of Carl's office and hurries home. He watches a news report regarding updates on Atwood's situation and sees that Brand is also Atwood's attorney. He finally understands and couldn't help himself from laughing. Eddie then hears banging at his door and notices from the surveillance cameras that Gennady had arrived with his goons, using metal grinders and steel cutters to break in. Stuck in an inescapable situation, Eddie steps up to the balcony, readying himself to jump. As his foot slips, he stops himself, trying to remember if he had left even just a single tablet somewhere. He digs through his mind and recalls one being left in his old tin container. He searches through the boxes and finds it, but Gennady breaks in, and Eddie trips on a box, losing the pill. Okay, Gennady screams dude. Him down. And Gennady shows Eddie an even better way of using NZT he dissolves it and injects it directly into his bloodstream. He says it's more potent this way and even lasts longer. Eddie looks around at his assailants and notices one of them has a blind eye. Gennady takes out several medical instruments, including knives, blades, and pliers, intending to torture Eddie into giving him more NZT. The henchmen start grinding into the safe in the next room while Gennady approaches Eddie, but Eddie stabs him with a knife he had earlier concealed. The two struggle and Eddie drives the blade into Gennady, killing him. Eddie lays on the floor next to a bleeding Gennady. He eyes the needle Gennady had used to inject the NZT and decides to drink Gennady's blood, hoping oh. to get some of the NZT into him. 
it works, and his brain starts working at total capacity. He lays on the floor and waits for the half-blind henchman to come back. As the henchman flips Eddie over, he spits out the syringe needle directly into the man's seeing eye, blinding him completely. What? The other henchman runs in, but Eddie outsmarts them, hiding in a room and using a TV to bash his pursuant's head. Eddie runs, but a henchman catches up to him, choking him. Eddie kicks him off, and the blind henchman shoots the other henchman by accident. The blind henchman then starts firing his gun, hoping to hit Eddie, but Eddie manages to disable him by pushing the man into a window using a piano. At the hospital, Hank Atwood dies. Eddie appears at the hospital and sits next to the driver. He wonders how Atwood died even though they successfully got the NZT pills for him. The driver then helps Eddie find Brandt, finding out that Brandt had kept the pills for himself rather than give them to Atwood. They find the drugs in Brandt's closet. Several years pass, and uh -huh. Eddie is now running for governor. He gets a call that a man representing a large pharmaceutical firm is waiting for him in his office. Eddie is surprised to see that the man is Carl. Carl tells Eddie he left Wall Street a while back and is now in the pharmaceutical industry. Carl reveals that he now knows about NZT, telling Eddie that the company he owns manufactures the drug. Carl offers Eddie a steady supply of NZT in exchange for a few favors he would later ask. Eddie refuses Carl's offer, but Carl warns that the illegal NZT labs have all been shut down, telling Eddie that they alone manufacture the NZT now. Eddie then reveals that he doesn't take NZT anymore. He had the drug tweaked and edited a while back, removing the side effects. He slowly took less and less NZT until he no longer depended on it, but the effects of the drug remained permanent on him. The modified NZT had permanently altered his brain patterns, and now, Eddie's brain is fully unlocked even off the drug. Eddie shows this Real. by predicting a van would hit a car because the driver is distracted. Carl looks over, and it happens. Eddie then places his hand on Carl's chest, saying he detects several problems with Carl's heart. Carl warns Eddie that he would be a brutal enemy, but Eddie is not threatened, saying he'd always be 50 steps ahead of him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. And then what? Thank you for watching.